Ahoy, Peter here from Brighter Training, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use EndNote 20. So we're just going to go through the essentials that you need in order to get started, things like creating your first library, importing references and searching various databases, and how to use the site while you write function on Microsoft Word. Now, I will include some detailed timestamps in the description section, so if you just wanna come back later on and revisit some key elements, you can just click on the relevant timestamp and jump straight to the part that you need. As always, if you find the video useful, please feel free to share it, throw us a like and a subscribe. Uh, otherwise, I hope the video is useful and let's jump straight in. So let's start from the very beginning. Uh, I assume you have EndNote installed. You can normally download EndNote directly from your university. You can find versions online. So it's just this purple and white icon here, or of course you can find it in your start menu, scroll down to E for EndNote, and there it is. So if we open that up, you may find that you get an error message. EndNote will always try and open the last library file that it opened. So in this case, I've deleted that so it can't find it. So I'll just click OK. And you should have this box pop up that asks to set up an EndNote library either by opening an existing one or by creating an entirely new one. So in this case, what we're going to do is click on Create New Library and it's going to ask you where you would like to save this. So a couple of things on this screen. First of all, your file name I recommend you name it as something logical to help you identify what this library is for. So usually I'll name it based on the subject that I'm studying. So in this case, I will just call it subject one. Now you'll notice that it saves it as an EndNote library, a .enl file, and I'll come back to that in just a moment. And it will default normally to your My Documents. You can save it wherever you want. I usually save mine on the cloud or my EndNote the publishers of the software do recommend that you save it locally and not on a cloud just to stop any corruption that may occur. So either way, always keep a backup of your file. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to save it in a folder on my desktop. I'm going to call it subject one and I'm going to hit save. And it's as simple as that. It has now opened up a brand new EndNote database. It's called EndNote 20 subject one. Now I mentioned before the file type. So if I go into the folder where I've saved that, you'll see that I have this EndNote library file called subject one, and I also have subject one dot data. So it's very important to understand that both of these files make up your EndNote library. So if you are going to copy your library, save it, back it up, share it, you'll need to make sure that you do copy both of these files and not just this one here. So I'll jump back into our new library and we'll start this tutorial with working out how to add references to your database. So there are three different ways that you can add references. So the first way is by using your school library. The second way is through various databases or Google Scholar. And the third way is within EndNote itself, there is an online search function. So we'll start with how to import a reference directly from your school library. Now, regardless of the school or university you go to, most of them will have an online database. You can see here, we're looking at CQU in Australia, and there's a library here that we can use. So if I come here and I'm gonna search for references for mental health treatments, and if I click search, it will bring up a whole lot of results, of course, there's over 1.8 million results. So when you are doing a search for references online or through a library, remember you normally will have some different filters that you can use. So as an example, if I only wanna search for peer reviewed journals, I can select that here. And then you'll see that my results are filtered now to only include peer reviewed articles. So of course, what we wanna do is take some of these references and put them into our database. So there's a couple of ways that we can do that. The first way, of course, is if I identify that these first four references, they're all valid, they're all important for my writing. What I can do is select those, come to the top of the screen, and I have these three dots, the ellipses called options. And if I click on that, 
you'll simply see that I've got an option to export to Bibtex, export to EndNote or RIS, or print or email. So of course we're going to uh, export to EndNote or RIS, and that's always the option that you choose when you're looking to export references. So if I click on that, leave my encoding as it is, and just hit download, and what will happen is the computer will now generate an EndNote library file for me. If I click on that, it will open up those four references into my EndNote library. Now if I go back to the library, this time what I can do is scroll through and if there is a specific one that I'd like to look at, maybe this one here, I can open it up and have a look. And if it looks like the one that I'm after, I can simply come to the top, there'll always be an option to send to. So again, I'm going to choose send to, export EndNote, click on download. Now that's going to open up another file for me up here. And if I click on that, it's now added that new reference to my database and it's added it to the overall list here. Now the second way that we can add a reference to the database is by using various online databases or search tools. So if I come back here, for example, if I want to download something from PubMed, which is a, a government database, or if I want to use Google Scholar, I can come here. So the first thing I do recommend, if you're going to search for references in online databases, is to normally go back to your school library. So in this case, I'll go back to my library homepage. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll see that there's an option here for databases. So I do recommend that you search for the database you'd like to access by going through your school library, because what that will do is it will log you into the databases using your university or your school credentials, which means you shouldn't have any issues in licensing or in accessing the content. So here, for example, there's a whole lot of different databases I can search. I'm going to jump across to P, scroll down, and here's PubMed. And that will allow me to access PubMed directly through my school library. Now, once again, if I'm looking for information on mental health, I can click search and we've got all of our options. And once again, down the side, there are a number of different filters that you can use if you're looking for certain types of publication. Now, just like with our school library, if I wanna add these references to my database, the two ways of doing that is to select the various references. And up the top, I've got an option to send to, just like before, we scroll down to Citation Manager, which is what EndNote is. It says that there's three references and I can click create file. And just like before, that will create an EndNote library. If I click on that file, here are my three references and it's added those three references to my overall list. Now, just like with our library before, I can also click on the reference specifically if I wanna maybe read the abstract or check out some information. Now. On the database, if I just want to manually cite that, I can click the cite button and it will show me what it looks like in different formats. Of course, what we want to do is add this to EndNote. So again, back up the top, there's an option to send to, click on citation manager and create file. Once again, it's created a file for me where if I click on that, it's now imported that reference into my EndNote. And if I come back up to the top here to all references, you'll see that it's been added. Now, the third way that you can add references to your database is by using the online search directly through EndNote itself. So again, there are a whole lot of different databases that you can search for, as you can see here. I'm just going to use PubMed again uh, as an example. So this time, if I click on PubMed, and you see it gives me some search options at the top of the screen. So I'm just going to change that to all fields and I'm going to look for the topic that I want, which is mental health, and I'm going to click on search. Now we'll give that a quick second. You'll see that it's searching for my results and it's brought up over 425,000 results. Now anything that I want to add to my references, all I need to do is highlight them and I can just drag and drop them into my all reference list and over on this side, in this panel, if I click on summary, it'll actually give me the information such as the abstract for each of the different uh, references that I've just found. So it's as simple as that. You can go through any of these databases. 
you can do a search and it will go searching through these databases and if any information comes up, you can click on that and simply drag and drop them into your reference list. Now that's how you can search for references online or through your school library. Now what if you want to import a reference directly? So for example, if someone sent you a PDF file that you'd like to add to your database manually. Now all we need to do for that is come up to File, scroll down to Import, and we're going to import a file. Now it'll bring up the import file box. What we want to make sure that we select is click on import option and select PDF since that is the type of file that I'll be importing. And if I click on choose, it will allow me to find my PDF file. So in this case, I'm going to click on my desktop where I have it saved. And if I click on import, you'll see that it's added that PDF file, that reference here. And over on this side, I can see that it's automatically populated uh, most of the database fields that I'll actually need. Now, and I've got the summary over here, which will give me the abstract, the DOI, and all the journal information. And there is a tab here for PDF. Now, sometimes when you import a PDF manually, it should add it automatically, but it doesn't always work. So your options in that case is either click on attach PDF and you can manually add that. Or I have found if you simply come back to the main reference screen, I can delete that one by hitting the delete key. And if I now try and re-import that, so it's a PDF, click on choose. I'm going to reselect that file and click import. Now, once again, I can see that it's imported that file. And this time, if I click on PDF, it has actually added the PDF automatically to it. So that's what it should do. Now, while I've got the PDF open here, I'll just show you a couple of things that we can do. Uh, you've got a little button that says open this PDF in a separate window. Now, if I click on that one, we can see here, here is my PDF file. Now, I can also come to this side and I've got an option to do markup and annotation. If I click on that, I can go through my PDF I can highlight key information, and as you can see, it's highlighted here in yellow. I can add comments to key sections just by clicking. I can double click on the comment and type in information and click close. And then once I've annotated and added notes to this, if I just come back up to the top right hand corner and close this box, it'll ask me if I want to make uh, change, make, save the changes to that if I click on yes. Now you can see that my reference and its attached PDF has actually got my annotations and my comments. So it works really well if you've got an up-to-date or a fairly modern PDF file. But what happens if you import something that's a little bit older or that hasn't got the metadata? So I'm going to show you what happens in that case. If I click on file, import file, we're going to import another PDF file. Now this time I've got this one here. This is an article that I found that I thought might be useful for my assignment. I click on the import button and this time you can see it has actually imported the reference into my database but there is no information. There's no author, there's no year, it simply has the file name. So what we can do in that case, it's almost like adding a manual reference. Uh, what we do here is you click on your reference, come over to this panel on the right hand side. And if I was to uh, check the summary, you'll see there's no information at all. So if I come across to edit, what I can do is manually add in uh, the information. Let's try again. Let's try Smith, there we go. Uh, if this one was from 2021, I can put in the journal name. Journal of Melbourne will do. And again, you can add in any of the relevant information that you think is important for you for your referencing. At the very least, I always recommend adding in a URL, so website.com, wherever you actually found that. And I can click on save. And now you can see here that it's added that information. And if I come back to the summary, it's got the information that I've keyed in. And down the bottom here, it will actually show me what the reference will look like when I insert it into a document. So currently it's showing me APA7. I can click on APA6. I can come down to Vancouver. 
I can look at different options and it will show me what it will look like in my reference list. So just like if you're adding details to a blank PDF file that has no metadata, it's pretty much the same process if you need to manually add a reference. So for example, just say you've been online, you've gone to a website that has some information that you'd like to reference and you want to add that to your EndNote database. So we come back to our database, you can either click on references and you've got an option for new reference here, or there's a little icon with a plus where it says add new reference to the selected group. So I can click on that, it will open up a window with pretty much a blank reference. So I can select whether it's a journal article, I can choose web page, there's a whole lot of different options. And what I can then do is manually copy the information from the website. So if we're looking at this one here, this is all about health.gov.au. So it's from the Australian government. Australian government. Okay, so that's from 2021. Uh, this might be the heading title. The publish, where it's published, it might just be uh, health.gov.au and etc. You put in your information. Uh, if I've got the actual website, the URL, I can scroll down to the bottom and pop that in and click save. Now that one's just loading up, so I've saved that one. If I come back to my database, you can see here it's added the Australian government got the details here but what you'll notice is it's automatically converted it to an author type format so it's got a dot government which of course is not what I want so when that does happen when you are quoting or citing a organization or a government body what you'll want to do is just come back into the reference and click edit if we scroll back up where it says author I want it to actually show Australian government since this is not a first name and surname so what you need to do at the end of that is simply put a comma and a space and it's just one of those things where this is what you need to do. Uh, so comma space, click save and now you'll find that it's actually changed Australian government. So if I come back to the summary up here, you'll see that it will now show up in my reference list as the Australian government 2021. Here's the title and here's where it was published. So I mentioned it before, but I just want to point it out specifically. If you're using a different reference format, so for example, over here on the right hand side, I have this panel and it's using APA7. Now you can scroll here, select a different style that's not listed at the top, or you can go through and choose whichever format that you need to use for your specific course or your specific school. So we can select that there. However you save that is what it will do is how it will import it into Word and you can also save that information in Microsoft Word as well. So I'll put it back to APA7. Now if that side panel is missing, all you also need to do is just double click on any reference and it will open it up again to the summary screen. There's the format, there's the edit page where you can add or change the data and there's the PDF if one has been added. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is when you've got some references here, now you'll notice I've only got one, two references which have got a PDF attached. None of these references have actually got PDF files. Now what I can do about that is I can either click on each reference, come to PDF, attach PDF, and add one manually. But EndNote also has the ability to search online. So if I highlight all of these different references, and what I can do is come up here where these icons are and you'll see one with a little magnifying glass. And if I mouse over that, it says search the web for full text documents for the selected references. Now, if I click on that one, you'll see over here, there's now an option that's popped up that says find full text. It's searching for these 12 references that I've highlighted and it will tell you what the results are. So you can see here, it's already found a PDF for two of those references. There are two other or three other references now where it can't find any additional information. So we'll just let that one search. There are six left. And you can see over here, it started to add 
the little paperclip icon that tells you that it's actually found PDF files and it's automatically attached those to my references. Now, sometimes as it's done here, it will also show found URL. So if it's found a specific website where you can access that reference, it will also add that information to the metadata. So now if I click on each of these, you'll see that the PDF file is now available and I can then of course go through, annotate, add comments. And it's the same for this one here. It's added the PDF automatically and the PDF for this as well. So that really saves you a lot of time if you need to look for the actual source document. And what's really useful as well is when you're writing your essays or your assignments, now I can simply click on this. And if I want to decide if I need to use this reference, I can pop this one out. I can scroll through and read the actual document and find the parts that are relevant. And if it is what I need, I can then go ahead and reference that one. Now, the final thing that you'll really want to set up when you first start using EndNote are what they call groups. So if I come across to the left-hand side here and you can see it says my groups, what this means is we can start to put all of our different references into different buckets. So when you start getting hundreds of references, of course, having them in one list becomes a little bit overwhelming. So what we're going to do is instead divide them up into separate groups. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. Option one is simply right click on my groups and you have an option for create group. If I click on that, this one might be for assignment number one, assignment number one. And I can right click on that again, create group. And this one is for again assignment number two. Now the other option is I can scroll up to the top and I've got the option here for groups and I can click on create group and assignment number three. So now I have three different groups and what I can then do is go back to my reference list and I can either click on several of those and start moving them just by drag and drop into the appropriate group that I want to do or I can right click on any one of these references and scroll down to add references to. And you can see here now, I've got these three groups that I've created and I can automatically add the references to that. And the other useful thing about having those groups is if you're doing an online search within EndNote, so we'll come back to PubMed and we can see here that there's a number of different references that I like. I can now right click on those references and instead of needing to drag them into the all reference list, I can simply scroll down to add references to and I can assign them automatically to my group. So that just makes it a lot easier for you to start sorting your information out or sorting them out by different assessments. If you're not sure where you've actually assigned one or if there's a few different references that you can't find, You've got an option up the top here for unfiled. If I click on that, you can see that I've got five different references which have not been allocated to a group. So I can allocate those if I want to. So this is another way where you can find uh, references that you maybe haven't used yet or haven't allocated yet. Now, the final thing again to look at is if you do want to delete a reference, if you delete one from a group, simply click on the group, click on the reference you want to delete and press the delete button. Now it'll ask you, are you sure you want to delete the reference? It will not delete it from your library. It will only delete it from your group. So if I click yes, it'll remove that reference from this group. I can also just go to my all reference list and I can manually delete references completely from my database. They will sit in your trash can over here on the left hand side. And if I click on that, Again, if I've decided I want to save some of these, I can drag them back into my reference list. Or if I right click, I can restore to library by using this function. Okay, so we now know how to set up our EndNote database. We know how to import references. We know how to assign them to different groups. We know how to delete them. So the next thing we need to know how to do is how do we use these within our Word document when we are writing our assignments? Now, the major benefit of course to EndNote is that it has a feature called Cite While You Write and it will automatically put our different references 
into our document for us and automatically create an appropriate reference list. So let me show you how that works. If I come across to Microsoft Word, and you can see here we have our new document. So if we pretend that this is a assignment that we're working on, and this first paragraph, I want to add a reference to this information. It is as simple as coming up to the top menu bar and you'll see that I've got an EndNote 20 tab now. If I click on that and I have a whole lot of different options that I can use. So for me to insert a reference, I simply click on the drop down list here, insert citation, click on insert citation. It will bring up my EndNote window. Uh, now, if you can't see all your references, what you can do is put the letter A in the search box, press enter, and it will bring up my entire reference list. So I can simply double click on a reference. You'll see that it will automatically add the reference here. And more importantly, it's automatically created a reference list for me over here. So I can simply change that that becomes my new heading, I can add that to a new page. And if I go through here and add, so EndNote, insert citation, insert citation. Now I can actually insert several references if I want to. I can either double click or I can come down to the bottom here and click on the insert button. You'll see that it's added all three references under APA 7 and I'll explain that in a moment and it's automatically added those references to my reference list. Now, if you're not using APA 7, all you do is come back up the top to your EndNote 20 tab and where it says style, click on the drop down list and select the style that you are using. In this case, we'll look at Vancouver. That one just uses numbers in your in-text citations and it's also automatically changed the format of my reference list. If I come back up to style and change it to a different one, you'll see that it will automatically change that and it will change my reference list and so on. It will adapt. There's, I think there's something like 7,000 different reference types or styles that you can use. So you can see here it's changed that format. You can actually manually create your own styles as well or edit the existing ones. So if you do need any help with that or you'd like a video on that, leave a message in the comments and I'll create one for you. So I'm going to put that back to APA 7. Now, a couple of different ways that you can also insert the reference through Microsoft Word is if I position the cursor exactly where I want the reference to go, jump back to EndNote. Now, if I've got a specific reference already selected, so such as my Australian government reference, if I come back to Microsoft Word, this is where I want it to go. I can just click on Insert and insert selected citation, and it will automatically insert the citation that I have highlighted in EndNote. And of course, it's automatically added that to my reference list. The other thing to consider as well is the format. So at the moment, uh, it's in brackets here. If I wanted to do it as a narrative form, so instead of ending the sentence with the reference, if I was suggesting that Android here suggests that, I can simply click on my reference, right click, come down to edit citation, and I can change the format. So I've got display as author and year. So now it's Android et al, 2014 in brackets, suggests that, and I can continue on with my sentence. I can also do that automatically when I'm inserting the reference. So again, insert citation, find the one that I want to insert, and instead of just clicking insert at the bottom here, I can click on my list and I can choose how I would like that citation to be recorded. In this case, I will do author with year in brackets again. And you can see that it's added it that way. And of course, it's automatically added it uh, to my reference list over here. Now, the other way of inserting a reference is through EndNote itself. So what we can do, again, you just need to know where your cursor is. So always be aware of that. Put the cursor in the right spot, so maybe before this full stop, uh, we'll do it over here. Now if I go back to EndNote and these are the references that I want to add, maybe these two, I can do that. I can come up to this little button here, the little quotation marks, which is insert a citation for each selected reference. 
I simply click on that button and you'll see that it's automatically added the references here and updated my reference list. So it's as easy as that. Now when it comes to deleting references, one thing to really be aware of is while this looks fairly straightforward, there's actually a lot of coding going on behind the scenes that we're not knowing. So ideally what we don't want to do is just highlight references, the ones that they pop up in grey when they've been inserted through EndNote. We don't just want to hit delete because it can really corrupt your file. Now you'll see if I do that, it can still work. I can highlight and delete and you'll see, don't know if you notice, it actually did remove those references from my reference list. So it can work. Sometimes it does corrupt your file. So the best way of removing any references that you've inserted is click on the reference so it turns gray, right click, come down to edit citation, scroll all the way down to more, and you'll see it's highlighting that reference that I've highlighted. Click on this little drop down list and remove citation. So it is a few extra steps to follow. If I click OK, it then removes the reference and the coding, removes it from my reference list, and it just prevents your document from uh, becoming corrupted. So a couple more little tips just quickly on using EndNote within Microsoft Word. Um, first of all, if you go back to EndNote and you make changes to any of these references, so if you double click, come into edit, and you change all the information, when you're in Microsoft Word, all you need to do is click Update Citations and Bibliography, and it will automatically update your references to align with what you've put into your EndNote database. So that's a very easy way of just making sure your references are updated. If now you actually want to convert this to plain text, so for example, you've finished your document, you've got your reference list, you want to share it with somebody else who doesn't have EndNote, and you don't want the coding from EndNote to corrupt your file. You can actually convert citations and bibliography, convert to plain text. It will say that it has not been saved in my case. Uh, I'm just going to continue without saving. And now what it's done is if I click on these references, they're not turning gray anymore. It's converted everything into text. So now there's no more coding. If I now try and update my citations, of course, there is no more connection to EndNote. So effectively, in converting that to text, it has disconnected it from my EndNote database, and it is now just a text document. Now, two more final tips that I want to show you with EndNote, which for me is one of the key reasons why I use the, the program as well, other than the convenience and the references. So if I come back to EndNote, as you can see, I've got 21 references here. Now, as you progress through a course, you might end up with several different libraries, depending on how you've used EndNote. So I always create a separate library based on each subject. So when I got to the end of one of my degrees, I then had to make sure I was referencing all the material from all my different subjects. So what I can do is actually merge my databases together. So if I come up to the top and click File, we're going to import again, and I'm going to import a file. But this time, instead of importing a PDF that we did earlier, I'm actually going to import an entire EndNote library. And if I click Choose, it's going to ask me for where that one is. So let me just do a quick search. We're going to have a look at Education. And you can see here I've got a whole lot of EndNote libraries. If I click on that, click on Import, and we'll give it a quick few seconds. And what it's actually going to do is import a separate library. And you can do this with as many libraries as you've got. You can import them into one single reference. So you can see here it's imported 574 references into my subject one library. Click OK. And we can see here I now have a total of 595 references. And these are all the references from that particular course that I've just imported. Now the final thing to show you as well is when you are writing your assignment and you've got a really large database like this, one of the benefits is as you go through your course, save every reference you come across. Because what you can then do toward the end is when you're writing your assignment, you can come into EndNote and you can do a search either for an author, but if you scroll up to any field, 
And if I type in the word, for example, innovation, it will go through my 595 references and it will bring up any reference that has the word innovation in the actual PDF file or in the reference itself. Uh, if we're looking for something more specific, we can type that in and it's going to bring up, so disruption, it's bringing up all my references that have the word disruption in it. So this is tremendously powerful when you are in the middle of writing your assignment. So again, we'll come back to Word, we'll create a new document, uh, we'll have a look at, this is what we're writing. Now, if I want to reference, I've got some information here uh, about disruption, I can come back to EndNote, search for disruption, it brings them up. I can click on one of them, I can read the abstract and see if that's what I need. If I need more information, I can click on the PDF and I can actually go through and read the entire reference of what I'm looking for. And if that is what I want, I can simply click on that one, export it, and it's added it automatically to my Microsoft Word document, and it's automatically added it to my reference list. So I think that's it. Uh, if you have any comments or any feedback about using EndNote, feel free to let us know in the comments section. If you found the video useful, please do share it with your friends, colleagues, other students. Uh, feel free to give us a like and subscribe, it really helps us out. Otherwise, best of luck with your study and we'll see you in the next video.